Disability Tax Credit Promoters Restrictions Act, standing in the name of Mrs. Gallant. Uh, Mrs. Gallant, seconded by Mr. McColeman, moves that Bill C-462, an act restricting the fees charged by promoters of the disability tax credit and making consequential amendments to the Tax Court of Canada Act, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. Debate. The Honourable Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Mr. Speaker, as the Member of Parliament for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, it's my pleasure today to speak to you in support of my private member's Bill C-462, an act restricting the fees charged by promoters of the disability tax credit and making consequential amendments to the Tax Court of Canada Act. My intention for bringing this legislation before the House is straightforward. I want to see increased protection for disabled Canadians from the predatory practices of some disability tax credit promoters who see the tax credit as an opportunity to profit on the reduced circumstances of others. The disability tax credit is a non-refundable tax credit that reduces the amount of income tax that either a person with a disability or their supporting person has to pay. Parliament voted in this tax credit with the recognition that Canadians with disabilities face financial challenges. Canadians may be eligible for the disability tax credit if all or substantially all of the time they are unable to perform one or more of the basic activities of daily living, even with therapy and the use of appropriate devices and medication. Basic activities of daily living include things like speaking, hearing, and eating. The wide array of disabilities eligible under the disability tax credit is important. As the Member of Parliament for Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke, which includes CFB Petawawa, I'm acutely aware of the number of disabilities that Canadians are living with. The soldiers and veterans of my community are at a greater risk for a number of disabilities because of the sacrifices they make for our country. And the tax credit is of particular importance to them. For the average Canadian, the maximum federal amount that could be claimed last year was $7,341. This resulted in a maximum federal tax savings of up to $1,101 for 2011. This is significant tax relief for Canadians living with a disability, and that money should be staying in the pockets of Canadians who need it. It should not be swindled away by unregulated promoters. This tax credit is important to them. My decision to introduce the legislation restricting the fees charged by promoters of the federal government's disability tax credit is a direct result of the aggressive tactics employed by some providers who objected to my decision to issue consumer alerts. I started issuing consumer alerts last year in my writing when I found out that some individuals were being charged 20, 30, or as much as 40% of the tax credit. Uh, I felt, and I'm hoping that other members of Parliament will agree, that those kinds of charges are unfair, especially when we consider that the purpose of the disability tax credit is to support Canadians living with serious disabilities. I wanted my constituents in Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke to know that they can access their federal member of Parliament regarding any federal tax credit without being charged a percentage of the tax credit. Changes were put in place in 2005 that made benefits receivable on a retroactive basis. This created a new incentive for those claiming to be consultants to work with Canadians on their claims as the dollar amounts on a 10-year retroactive tax refund can be significant. I started to get a sense of how big an activity this whole tax 
credit promoter scheme is when a promoter complained about my consumer alert by telling me that he had spent $25,000 on booking space, hotel rooms, and media coverage, and he expected to make his money back after driving the 905 kilometers to my rural eastern Ontario riding with his traveling road show. His complaint was, how dare I tell the people to see their member of parliament and let them have all of the tax refund they qualified for with the, ta re the disability tax credit. We're also not talking about a small number of Canadians, Mr. Speaker. The Canada Revenue Agency receives on average 200,000 new disability tax credit applications each year. It's estimated that approximately 9,000 of these requests are received from taxpayers who use the service of a disability tax credit promoter. Last year alone, nine, me, $800 million in credits were issued. I'm still receiving phone calls and emails with complaints from these promoters. Many of the comments I have received are along the line that they're just helping our government to promote the disability tax credit and they deserve the fees they're getting. Mr. Speaker, I couldn't disagree more. There may be legitimate companies doing this work. Unfortunately, it's the less scrupulous operators that have identified the need for the legislation that I'm proposing today. I ask all members of the House to support Bill C-462. Concerns have been raised by medical professionals who feel they're dealing with an increasing number of fraudulent claims and have at times felt pressured to fill forms out fraudulently by constituents. I know this to be the case because doctors in my writing have told me that uh, this has been their experience. One doctor relayed the incident of having an individual sit in his office and refuse to leave until he filled out the disability tax credit certificate to get the tax credit. In the doctor's expert medical opinion, he insisted on being truthful when asked to complete the tax certificate. This same patient who had been encouraged in this behavior by a disability tax credit promoter was revealed to have visited four doctors previously looking to have the certificate completed in such a way as to qualify for the tax credit. Now, some consultants have even taken the step of employing in-house medical practitioners to sign the medical portion of the disability tax credit application, perhaps having only met the person just once with no prior knowledge of the applicant's medical history. So let's talk a bit about the credit. To qualify, an individual must have a severe and prolonged impairment in mental or physical functions as defined by the Income Tax Act and as certified by a qualified practitioner. Eligibility is not based on the diagnosis of any specific medical condition, but is based on the effects of the conditions on an individual over a prolonged period of time. Some examples of conditions that may qualify include walking. A person with no apparent mobility impairment who is unable to walk a short distance without stopping frequently to rest because of shortness of breath or pain may qualify for the disability tax credit because it takes him or her an inordinate an amount of time. Uh, vision may be uh, a condition. Someone who's suffering from a degenerative condition that will not improve with the use of corrective lenses or medication and has a severe visual impairment may qualify for the disability tax credit. Hearing. Uh, a person who even with the use of a device is unable to hear 
or who takes significantly longer than an average person who does not have an impairment to understand spoken conversation may qualify for the disability tax credit. Speaking. A person who even with therapy devices is unable to speak so as to be understood and must rely upon other means of communications or who takes significantly longer than an average person who does not have the impairment to make themselves understood may qualify for the disability tax credit. This list is not meant to be exhaustive. These are just a few examples and the information is gathered directly from the Canada Revenue Agency website. My intention in bringing the bill before the House is straightforward. I want to see increased protection for disabled Canadians from the predatory practices of some disability tax credit promoters on the one hand and also contribute to a fair functioning marketplace for those who do wish to use the services of a disability tax credit promoter. Bill 462 would provide a new legislative framework to limit the fees charged by promoters for the services of assisting applicants for the disability tax credit. In particular, the bill would restrict the fees that can be charged or accept by promoters to prepare a request associated with the disability tax credit, the DTC, under the Income Tax Act. It would prohibit charging or accepting more than the established maximum fee and would introduce offenses and penalties for failure to comply. Bill 462 would introduce a requirement that promoters notify the Canadian Revenue Agency when more than the maximum fee has been charged. The provision of the bill came into, will come into force on a day to be fixed by the order of the Governor in Council, at which time the proposed maximum fee will be made public. This is not an attempt to crack down on those legitimately claiming the credit or to deny claims. It's an attempt to make sure those who qualify and for those who require the tax credit are able to receive it without paying unfair charges. As the Member of Parliament for a rural Eastern Ontario riding of Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke, I understand, as does our government, that Canadians can have a difficult time making ends meet. And as a result, we offer a very generous range of credits. These uh, tax credits are a key component of our economic action plan, a plan for jobs, growth, and long-term prosperity. That's working for Canadians as we face a, a global economic downturn. Examples of important credits include the universal child care benefit, the Canadian child care benefit, uh, children's fitness tax credit, children's art credit, Volunteer Firefighters Credit, First Time Home Buyers cre Tax Credit, Public Transit Tax Credit, just to name a few. These are all credits I encourage my constituents to take advantage of if they can and to come to my constituency office and we'll help them apply, no charge. I've spoken to the minister and to be clear, if you qualified for the disability tax credit, say in 2007 or 2008, and your medical situation is the same now as then, you will absolutely qualify for the credit. This is about protecting Canadians from predatory and unfair practices of unregulated promoters. This credit isn't intended to line the pockets of promoters. The disability tax credit promoters are currently totally unregulated. This is producing a system that's increasingly ripe for abuse. Lawyers charge contingency fees, but they're bound by strict codes of ethics and the bar associations carefully scrutinize actions to ensure appropriate professional ethical behavior. Perhaps most appropriate for today's discussion, tax preparers are guided by the Tax Rebate Discounting Act and capped at what they can charge for their service. 
An accountant can't take 20 minutes, prepare and submit your taxes, and then charge you 40% of your refund. Tax preparers also have a professional organization that promotes ethics and peer review of business practices. I chose not to set a maximum fee in the legislation because I wanted to allow for consultations with disability groups, medical professionals, and legitimate tax professionals to help inform this decision. I want to ensure to make that sure that uh, disabled Canadians who do need the help of someone with their applications can get it, and, are, and we are not imposing unnecessary red tape on doctors or legitimate, legitimate tax preparers. I note that there is a, a rate set in the Tax Rebate Discounting Act for accountants and, and others that may be part of the discussion on the Disability Tax Credit Consultants. The rate uh, under the Tax Rebate Discounting allows for a $45 fee on the first $300 and 5% on amounts above $300. This fee level is something I would expect will be uh, raised during the consultations. There are no similar accountability measures for the Disability Tax Credit Order. The, uh, the, time, uh, the time for the, uh, the, first, uh, the first intervention, the first uh, speech is uh, now at its limit. We go to uh, questions and comments. Question and commentaire. L'honorable député de Saint-Léonard, Saint-Michel. The Honourable Member for Saint-Léonard, Saint-Michel. Saint um, I um, want to commend the uh, member for introducing the bill. I think it's, uh, it's got a good idea. First of all, I'm shocked that a Conservative is actually going to present a bill that's re going to require more re regulation, which I'm not totally uh, sold on. But a uh, quick question would be, in her act here, she says that the definition of a promoter means a person who directly or indirectly accepts or charges a fee in respect of uh, disability tax credit. Uh, so what is the definition? Who is a promoter exactly? So is a doctor, lawyer, or an accountant considered a promoter? Thank you, Mr. The Honourable Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and that's an excellent question from my colleague opposite. Uh, that what we're uh, looking at here are the third-party promoters, uh, quite apart from the regular tax preparers, accountants. It's a new cottage industry that sprung up once the 10-year uh, retroactive provision was made, uh, recognizing that there are uh, volunteer organizations and even constituency offices that uh, do this type of work, who help constituents fill out applications for tax credits. There is a provision for exemptions so that uh, people who volunteer their time uh, and who do it at no charge and, and to ensure that doctors as well do not fall into this have been made. Thank you. Uh, question and comment, uh, the Questions and comments? For Fort McMurray, Athabasca. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm, I commend the member for this uh, bill. It seems uh, very useful indeed. Hundreds of millions of dollars going in unwarranted profits to people that would prey on the most vulnerable Canadians, and I applaud her for that, and I will be supporting this bill, and I hope all members will do that. I'm wondering uh, why specifically she didn't set out a maximum fee in relation to the contingency fee charged. I know in Alberta there was uh, talk of this for some period of time in relation to solicitor fees, and that was capped at 30 percent uh, some time ago, about 12 years ago, from uh, an unregulated uh, industry, and I know that that was met by much applaud in the industry in Alberta. I'm wondering if she did much research on this and why she didn't set a particularly maximum fee. Member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and my colleague for the indication that he will be supporting my bill. Uh, the reason uh, that I didn't set a specific fee is that we want to have consultations with the tax uh, credit promoters, people with disabilities, because some people do want that extra help apart from the regular tax preparers. We want input from tax preparers as well as accountants and medical professionals. Uh, so we'll be doing the consultations and uh, then announcing what the fees allowable will be at that time. Thank you. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Member for Saint Maurice Champlain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. I would like to know, uh, the Speaker's colleague has said that the uh, fraudsters spend hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, rather keep them in their pockets. 
What I would like to know is what are, is the percentage of uh, disabled people who are entitled to a tax credit and who are the victims of such fraud? Through Nipissing Pembroke. Well, first of all, Mr. Speaker, I made reference to uh, the tax promoter that uh, said he had spent $25,000 on promoting. Uh, now, in reference to the question on what number of people are eligible, uh, CRA says that 200,000 new applications are received on a yearly basis. Insofar as what number of people are swindled or how much it goes to the tax preparers, we don't know because it's totally unregulated. And that's why we're putting these provisions in place so that we can keep track and ensure that the tax promoters are being fair to Canadians living with disabilities. Time for uh, one uh, short question. The Honourable Member for Brant. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, um, first of all, want to commend uh, my fellow uh, colleague on introducing this bill. Many of the people in Parliament actually have spent a lot of time with persons with disabilities. And, of course, um, we quickly realize that they are the most vulnerable. And this bill drives at protecting and making sure the most vulnerable are not taken advantage of, and I commend her for that. My question has to do with the services that she provides in her constituency office without, I would think, any additional staff than would normally be in an office, and how much, how many constituents avail themselves of that service? Member for Renfrew, Nipissing Pembroke, a short response, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for, from Brant for seconding my bill and for all the work that he has done throughout his lifetime in helping people with disabilities. Uh, in terms of my office, uh, we do keep statistics, but uh, we're, and we're, now that the disability tax credit, the profile has been raised, we're receiving more people. So on a, a weekly basis, uh, we would probably see anywhere from 80 to 100 people and of that, maybe 20% on taxes, again, depending on the season. And we help uh, on a number of occasions uh, with people getting their disability tax credit, and it can amount to the tens of thousands of dollars if it's on a retroactive basis. Resuming debate.